So, um, what we've done so far is this. You picked a skill to improve, you tested it, and you've gone into a skill improvement program. And the skill improvement strategies we've used, the biomechanics and feedback, whole part, whole learning, open and closed learning, and we talked about, we touched on arousal control, which we touched on last time, okay? I've got you then to do three sessions, I think, two or three sessions, and then you've evaluated it so far, looking at the positives and the negatives, and it wasn't interesting, making modifications, so. You made some judgments about what was working for you, what wasn't working for you, and you've made some modifications which you started to use today. And then what we're gonna be doing is it loops back around um, after two sessions of those modifications, we are gonna test it again and just see if we've improved overall. So that's kind of what we're doing, that's the process we're following. And the, just to remind you that we looked at our major negative was being boredom for most of the groups, okay? Mm -hmm. And that sits under um, uh, sports psychology. So there's three main types of um, improvement strategies that we were going to use. Anatomy, or functional anatomy. Skill improvement strategies, like biomechanics, whole part learning, etc. And sports psychology, which is um, our theory that we're using, zero algebra control theory. Just to remind you, there's that inverted U theory of arousal control, where this axis is performance, zero bad performance, 10 out of 10 performance, and the bottom one here was your arousal levels, low, optimal, and over. So if you've got low arousal, um, that's gonna lead to poor performance, mainly because it could um, lead to boredom, distraction, tedium, decreased motivation, all right? If you are over aroused, all right, you're in that zone where um, potentially you are too excited, highly anxious, could cause you to freeze, makes you afraid of making mistakes, you start to get a little bit hesitant, um, and it can actually decrease motivation as well through fear and anxiety. <coughs> all right? We want to try and be in this zone here, so this is what you girls have done, is you've tried to change your training program so that you're in the optimal arousal zone so that basically your performance in your trainings are at 10 out of 10. So if that is the case, you're focused, you're excited, you're a little bit on edge, you're in the zone and you're motivated. What I want to do now today is I want to make the link between motivation and what's happening inside your brain when you learn a skill. It's real basic neurophysiology. Um, I've not, not dumbed it down, what's the word for it? Made it really simple because that's what we need at level two because it can get quite involved. Neurophysiology is the study of the brain and what happens in your brain whenever you're doing anything. Um, but the neurophysiology of skill acquisition. Skill acquisition means to um, obtain a skill or get a skill. So your neurons in your brain are little cells. Okay, so if you do biology, you'll know that cells have a nucleus and then they communicate to each other. And they communicate to each other in the brain via this thing here. So the circle is the cell. This is called an axon, okay? And these are called um, the terminals of the axon. And what happens is there's a chemical reaction between each of the cells. So basically this one here decides it wants to send a message to this one. So it sends an electrical impulse along here via chemicals. And then it, it communicates to that one. That one goes, oh, okay, it's communicated. I'm gonna pass it along the chain you end up with all these pathways inside your brain. There's a pathway for walking, there's a pathway for sitting and standing, there's a pathway for throwing a ball. Your, la your brain has laid down all these pathways through all of the little connections between these individual brain cells in your brain. When you practice a new skill or start a new skill, what happens is it starts firing up a particular pathway of neurons. And each skill is unique. They might be similar, but generally they are all unique. At first, when you learn it, they're a little bit rusty. The communication between the neurons is rusty. So what happens is, when you're first learning, it'll send a message, it kind of goes, oh, oh, you want me to move? Okay, so I'll then send that one to there, I'll send that one to there, but it's a little bit slow. But the more you practice it, the stronger those connections become, and the quicker the connections become. If you think about a gravel road, 
at the, at the start, it's like a gravel road. You have to go a bit slower, drive a bit slower. It's not as safe. Put down some tar seal after a while, you can drive faster. So it's like starting off the gravel road and after a while your brain works out, actually hang a minute, I need to make this a, a, a asphalt or a concrete road because you're going to use this pathway a lot. All right? So essentially what happens is your neurons in the brain speak to each other when you're learning a new skill. When you practice that new skill, um, they speak to each other and the more practice you do, the stronger the connection between those cells become and the stronger the pathway. All right? Um, and then basically it gets to the point where that pathway becomes automatic. So your brain, that pathway is so strong, it just happens automatically. Now, if you're motivated, you're likely to do more training or more practice and you're likely to use those pathways more. So therefore, your skill improvement or skill acquisition is likely to be better. If you're under aroused and you're bored, motivated, and you're not doing the skill as much as what you could do, that pathway is not going to get as strong as quick. If you're overexcited here, yeah, what happens is the communication between these cells here is a little bit different, and it, it, it actually uh, becomes a little bit faulty because you get adrenaline, you get all sorts of other chemicals going on in the brain affecting those connections, so the pathway doesn't get as strong. All right, so that's the link between the theory of motivation or theory of arousal control and how and why it impacts your skill learning at a brain level. Now, if you can bring that into your writing to justify why you made the change. So I made the change because we were bored. I was bored, which was affecting the, the neurophysiology of skill acquisition and to give me an explanation. That's really high level, that's good, all right? So um, that's the importance of the connection of why this stuff here impacts on our school learning. Yeah, Pato, any questions?